So hi everyone, my name is Amy Buford. Um, I have just finished my 12th year teaching as an early childhood special educator. Um, I've spent most of my teaching in Adams 14 and Poudre School District in Fort Collins where I'm currently teaching at Putnam Elementary School. I've also been able to experience a different teaching experience, sorry. Um, my journey to becoming a CEA investor started when my local union president approached me and suggested I join the sm a small group of teacher leaders where we were fortunate to travel to the National Educators Building in Washington, D.C. Here I learned about the power of a collective voice and the impact grassroots advocacy can have. The same week I was discovering a hidden leadership talent at the nation's capital, Denver teachers were also advocating at our Colorado State Capitol um, for the Red for Ed movement. It was very humbling to travel from the state capital to D.C. in the same week. Through excellent mentorship of my local and state teacher union, I uncovered a hidden interest in policy and leadership and wanted to get involved in everything I could, starting with advocating for students who are at risk and in disadvantaged situations, as well as advocating for the teachers who support them. My teachers union gave me the tools and my voice to and in leadership and ability to begin my advocacy work. So here I am. Um, I was able to, well, sorry, I was able to go to Washington, D.C. and the NEA headquarters because of the ECLF program, a national program to grow young educator leaders in the union. PEA was one of six locals nationally to receive this grant. My cohort focused on creating a project to support new educators to the art district and the career, then presented our project at the Summer Leadership Conference in 2018. This leads me to where I started to apply for the ambassador program through CEA. I applied while I was in Hawaii and I was selected. My first step was to meet with my local president, John Robertson, who helped me identify where my passion to support at-risk students and families could benefit our district. And I created a survey to assess the understanding and needs of teachers in accessing community resources to support at-risk students. From there, I went. I met with my mentor, Jill, several times to help me narrow my focus. Um, I pitched many ideas to her on what the best direction I should take my project. And I had a lot of ideas, but Jill had great constructive feedback that helped me narrow my focus, narrow my focus of my project to creating positive communication avenues between educators and community agencies that help support students at risk. That's when my ideas started to help close the gap of communication and understanding. The journey to my project began with identifying and identifying the extreme disconnect and miscommunications between educators and social workers to the point where two very special students of mine were in foster care and were falling through the cracks because the adults in their lives were unaware of the support systems that are in place to help support and protect at-risk students. The systems were failing them because the adults in their, lives, in their lives were unaware of how these supports should operate. As a classroom teacher, I became an advocate for these students, and after many hours of interviews, emails, and Zoom meetings, I felt like my project was finally coming together, despite the barriers of COVID. After sharing my ambitions and goals with my leadership in my district, I was able to organize and facilitate a large panel discussion for all early childhood educators in Poudre School District. The panel consisted of multiple agencies that provided resources for families in Limerick County, including CASA, the Health District, and the Family Housing Network. Ideally, I would have loved to do this in person, but I presented from home. And then after my presentation, I went to Lobby, Gate, Lobby Day at the State Capitol to continue advocating for the need for closing the gap. Lobby Day this year was virtual, but as vaccinated educators, I was able to attend in person. Legislators were excited to see teachers at the Capitol. I talked to at the time Representative Jenny Arndt, now the mayor of Fort Collins, Senator Joanne Janal and Kathy Kipp about my project and the need to close this gap. All of the legislators were receptive and excited about my project and agreed there is a need for this gap to be closed. Although there is no tan not a tangible product of my project yet, I have developed a strong relationship with organizations in the community that share similar goals, goals to help students in disadvantaged situations, and I plan on continuing my relationships I have made specifically with Julie Phillips, the Community Engagement Specialist for Limer County of CASA. Uh, we continue to brainstorm how to continue this work on a, at a larger le level. In fact, after my presentation, there were many um, teachers who decided 
join CASA as a volunteer, which is only a, a step at beginning to bridge the gap of communication between teachers and the rest of um, community organizations. So it's a work in progress, but I really appreciate everything that I have learned through this process. And thank you for your time. <laughs>